Elizabeth from Art Studio Life and today I have a video for you that is all about how to paint transparent objects, specifically glass. So I demonstrate and show just really specific and important things that you need to know when just encountering glass or just any kind of transparent object. So stay tuned and if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. And here I just finish up my sketch um, before I start my painting. And when you're painting glass, the first initial color spots that you apply are really crucial and really important. Um, so here, I, I first start with a background area and I apply kind of a medium value blue color. I use some ultramarine blue mixed with white, mix some cadmium orange to mute it a little bit. Then I have a darker version for the shadow area there on the left side. Again, when you're dealing with glass and painting, especially something that is clear glass and not colored, you're, you're gonna deal with um, having lots of similar colors and that's why it's so important to really pay attention to color temperature because there's gonna be subtle shifts in color. And here you can see the blue that's kind of, that I'm painting now on the bottle is a little bit more purplish. Um, and to do that, I mix just a little bit of a lizard and crimson or red into my blue. It's always good to ask yourself if the colors that you're seeing through the glass are warmer or cooler than the colors that you're not seeing through the glass. But what is more important than paying attention to color temperature is of course value. And you can see here on the um, inside part of the kind of the bottleneck area, the right side is a little bit lighter in value than the left side. So that's because the shadow section is on the left side. So I made sure to make that light. And now here, the kind of the rim area is definitely darker in value, so I mixed up a rather dark value color. I used ultramarine blue, mixed it with some orange to kind of get a good sort of muted, darker color that I could use for this area. One that kind of, it, it sort of is a little bit on the warmer side than on the cooler side, but it does change temperature in different areas. The bottom kind of right side of the rim section was a little bit greenish, so I actually used they look green and mix that with some alizarin crimson to get that darker color. Again, here I have a lighter value blue that's on the right side and that kind of facing side of the rim. I also, I use my palette knife and my fingers to kind of soften the edges in between the kind of the shadow areas and then the light section areas. And as always, the background is just as important as the main subject matter. So here I kind of work on completing that background section, putting in that lighter blue color into the background. And I pay attention more here now to this uh, lighter section on the right side of this bottle. And again, I actually mix in a little bit of yellow because it has a subtle kind of yellowness to that lighter blue color. And you can see here where the center part of this bottle is where that shadow section is. And I actually use um, ultramarine blue here for this middle part because that's warmer in temperature than cobalt blue. I mix in a little bit of red into it again to kind of um, just make it even warmer in temperature. I also mix in a small amount of yellow into the color as well. Again, to help warm it, but then also just mute it ever so slightly because I don't need it to be saturated because yellow is the complementary color of purple. And what is really crucial when you're working with, with uh, see-through glass especially, is that you really need to simplify. We, you really need to find the big value areas, the big value sections, and that's what we're doing. That's we, why we are simplifying here, and we've, we've really kind of um, sort of scraped away a bit, kind of used the palette knife to kind of smudge um, just to help to simplify the painting even more and help us to see um, just what's going on more clearly. Now here I'm darkening this area that's um, the rim section of the top of the bottle. I am using more ultramarine blue and cadmium orange to get this darker color. I'm also using phthalo green as well as alizarin crimson to cut um, to darken this color and in some areas it's a little bit warmer than other areas. For example, as I mentioned before, the bottom right side is a little more greenish than um, that left side is a little more kind of orangey. So again, paying attention to color temperature really helps to figure out kind of what color or what, what sort of mixture you should do for certain colors, especially when you're dealing with a lot of similar colors like in this painting. 
Now the uh, middle section here is, is a little bit darker that it's up at kind of the top of the bottle area. And it's also a little bit more blue. It kind of has a stronger blue color. So I, I don't uh, mute it as much as the other areas of the painting. So I use less orange when mixing up that kind of darker blue color. When painting um, see-through glass kind of objects, you are going to deal with some colors being more saturated and less saturated. So it's important to kind of um, look at that and really identify that in your subject matter. And we get to deal with really fun highlight areas when we paint glass. So just like this kind of upper section in the back part of the rim area, I was able to really pull out this really cool bright highlight area. So I mixed um, actually some cadmium lemon with uh, some white to get that color. But I also, again, I muted it a little bit because it'd be far too bright if I just used white straight from the tube. So I mixed in a little bit of purple to mute that slightly. And again, I'm kind of now pulling out some of those other lighter areas that are around the rim section. So I, um, again, I muted it with purple quite a bit. Um, to kind of get it to be not so bright, um, especially in this front part now of the bottle. So it's yellow uh, mixed with quite a bit of the blue, then with some purple and um, to kind of mute that yellow that's in it. Now that slightly lighter area that's kind of in the middle part of this bottle is sort of a larger and there's other values within that. And it's okay, it's good to really paint the, the big spot of color. Then you can go over that like I am right now with this darker kind of blue value color. And again, this is uh, ultramarine blue here that's mixed with some cadmium orange, a little bit of white, um, but not too much because it needs to still be rather dark, but it is rather saturated. I mixed in a little bit of alizarin crimson to it to, for it to retain more of that purpleness. Now here's a fun stage where I can pull out that highlight that's on the front part of the bottle. So again, I use some of that white that I mixed up earlier that has some of that cadmium lemon in it. So it has just a little bit of that yellow quality, but it's muted still with a little bit of purple, some light purple color. Here I'm adjusting the color here on this lighter part of the bottle that's in the front. I just warmed it up a little bit by adding some orange and a little bit more yellow. I also darkened the area that's on the left side. It's a little bit lighter, but it had it too light earlier on. So I just darken that color a little bit. Again, it's so important to pay attention to value first and foremost. Here, I'm reinforcing that shadow section that's on, that's kind of behind the bottle. I darkened it a little bit because I was getting lost earlier. And I work on the background area also here on the right side. So this is kind of a colder blue. I used um, more cobalt blue as kind of the base for that background area in comparison to the ultramarine blue, more for the bottle area. Now there's a really subtle, um, not strong, but kind of, it's, I, I don't want to call it an outline, but just um, sort of edge that's on the bottle that's a, just a little bit darker. Um, but it's really important to not um, think of it as an outline because you really, because there are areas that kind of are lost edges or you see sections just disappear into the background. Now during the painting process, that kind of front section of the bottle where that highlight is just got a little bit muddled. So I kind of reinforced that with some of that yellowy um, white paint. Now there's just a really subtle um, darker section right here that's caused by a crease in the fabric that's in the background. So I used some cobalt blue and mixed in just a little bit of, of ultramarine blue and then used some orange to um, mute the color and also help to darken it. There are also some darker areas as well here on the bottle section of the painting. So I um, darken those areas, I paint over kind of the lighter areas also in the background section. Um, there's um, some parts that need to be darker. Again, it's really good to, as you go through your painting, evaluate your painting, ask yourself, does this need to be darker? Does it need to be lighter? And if it needs adjustment, go ahead and make those changes because that's going to really, really help your painting to feel convincing and feel like glass. So now at this point, we're kind of nearing the end of this painting sketch here. 
And it's at this point that I, again, I ask myself if I can simplify the painting more because simplifying is one of the most important things to do when you're painting in general, but especially when you're painting something like see-through clear glass. So I, when I squint, I squint my eyes and that helps me to see if areas need to be lighter or darker. And I see that the highlight actually really needs to be much brighter. It wasn't quite bright enough. So I um, go mix up that kind of white paint, mix a little bit of yellow into it and work on that. Then I kind of reinforce some of those darker areas that exist around that highlight section. But again, because I want to simplify and I want to make sure they're also, I'm paying attention to those edges, I bring up my palette knife and I soften some of those edges. It sometimes requires to paint over certain areas after I soften edges and that's totally fine. It's um, well worth the effort to go through that. It is also very well worth your effort to pay attention to the types of edges that you're seeing um, when painting glass. Because of the nature just of the see-through glass, it's a little bit more difficult to um, create depth and volume in your painting. Um, so, and it's those edges that really helps you to create that. And it helps kind of the glass to feel volumetric and to feel like it has dimension. And so find those soft edges, find those hard edges, paint those, um, because that is what will really give your painting just um, that sense of space. Now glass has very subtle visual elements, so everything I mentioned throughout this video will really help you. It all comes down to color spots and just placing one color next to another. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up so other people can find it. And don't forget to subscribe to get more tutorials and painting tips. I'll see you in the next video.